if you've got a function, here's a function, right? And it looks roughly like this. 3x plus 1, it's got a gradient of 3, so it's pretty steep. And it's hitting the y-axis at once. So I'm guessing something like this. Okay, there you go. That's what the line looks like. I can find the inverse function of this, the function that's like the opposite, the, the flip side of this, by taking my inputs and swapping them with my outputs. Okay, so what I very briefly showed you was, well, what happens if we do that? Okay, I would say x equals 3y plus 1. That is the inverse function. Okay, then da da da, -da is the inverse function. Now, it's a little bit weird to write our equations with x as the subject. We have been doing that ever for years. So we said, well, let's just do a bit of algebra on this and make y the subject, because that's kind of what we're used to. Okay? Now, this is almost exactly the example we did. So let's just, or it is the example we did. So let's just quickly rehearse. How do I make y the subject in this case? Can someone give me a suggestion the first step? Yeah, let's, um, let's get this one, and let's get him over the other side. I will subtract one from both sides. Okay? So that gives me this on this line. Okay? And then I only have to do one more thing to get y by itself, rather than 3y. What do I do? Yeah, I'm going to divide both sides by 3. Okay? So that gives me um, x minus 1 over 3 equals y. And I'll just, I'll just flip around a little bit. So you can see I get this. So here's my inverse function, okay? Now, very, very quickly, even though I think this is fine, this is nice and neat, okay? It's in my interest to write this, it's a straight line, uh, more like this. You see how I've got my mx plus b form? So I can read the gradient straight away, and I can read its y-intercept straight away, okay? So let me just quickly rewrite this in this way. If I separate out these terms, do you agree, like x is being divided by 3? You okay with that? Right. I've got x and there's an over 3. And then what's left over? Um, well, there's a minus 1, also divided by 3. Okay. So these lines are the same. I've just taken one fraction and I've broken it apart. And now I know here's my gradient and here's my intercept. Okay. So I, I can draw this thing. It's not hard. Uh, let's see here. Uh, a third is like a gentle, gentle sort of gradient. It's not, it's not very steep at all. So it's going to do something like this. Okay. Now, yeah, it's not too bad. And here's our inverse function. Now, what I want to do is borrow this function notation we've been working on and use that because at the moment, I'm kind of confused. Like, I've got y equals this and y equals that. Like, which one is it really, okay? And so I can use function notation where f is a name or g is a name or that kind of thing and use it to my advantage, okay? So let's rewrite this exact example. I'm going to say, uh, I'm just continuing from that. If, rather than calling it y, if I call it f of x is 3x plus 1, okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to name the inverse of f as f with a negative 1 up there, okay? Now, please mark this, okay? And admittedly, it's a bit confusing to start with, right? Um, this is not f to the power of minus 1, even though that's exactly how I've written it, okay? What I read that as, as is as f inverse, in exactly the same way that on your calculator, if you've got it there, on your calculator, you have above um, sine, cos, and tan, right? Above sine, cos, and tan, you see, um, for instance, I didn't really give myself enough space, did I? You see sine, and then there's a minus 1 there. Now, that is not sine to the power of minus 1. Uh, it doesn't do, it's not this division thing, okay? In fact, we read that as sine inverse and cos inverse and tan inverse. And I read this as f inverse. Okay? Now, I've already found it. Uh, it. It's right there. So let's just write it down. It's a third x minus a third. Okay. Now, the great advantage of using this um, function notation in this way um, and I'll just, I'll just label that so that in your notes when you come back to this later, you'll be like, oh, what's that referring to? Right. So this is a function, and this is um, the inverse of that function. The great advantage here is twofold. Number one, I don't get my y's mixed up. Like, I've got y equals this and y equals this. Well, just make up your mind. Which one's y? Just tell me which one you want. Here, they've actually got two different names. So I won't, I won't mix them up with each other, okay? So that's good. 
Um, but secondly, I can demonstrate really clearly why the inverse is what it is by using this function notation business and evaluating things. Okay? Here's how I'm going to show you. Um, example. If I take a value, pick a number between 1 and 10. 5. OK, 5, 1. Too slow. That's all right. Now, if I say, if I say 5, OK, I'm going to go f of 5. Now, what does this mean? I'm taking 5 as an example of an input. I'm going to stick it in, and I should get an output out. Does that make sense? Let's just quickly evaluate it, because you've been doing this all morning, right? f of 5, I'm going to take everywhere I see an x, there's only one of them, and I'm going to replace it with a 5. You OK with that? 3 times 5 plus 1. That's 16. So far, so good? Okay. Now, the inverse function, what it does is it switches everything around, right? Like, that's literally what I did. I took the x's and the y's and I flipped them, right? I swapped places. So therefore, what this means is, instead of taking an out input and giving you an output, it's going to do exactly the reverse. Watch, right? If I say f inverse and I take what was the output, which you just told me it was 16, okay? I should be able to get back to the input if I've done the function correctly. Let's give it a go, okay? Here we go. This is my um, inverse function, right? So I'm just going to dutifully replace every x I see with the number 16, okay? So I'm going to put a 16 there minus a third. Yeah? Okay. Let's, um, let's, let's crunch this through. 16 <coughs> over 3, and this is minus 1 over 3, so they have the same denominator already. It's kind of handy. So I'm just going to put that as minus 1. Right? That's that minus a third. Okay. 16 take away 1, of course, is? 15. 15. 15 over 3. It's fine. Do you see it worked? Right? In the first place, you gave me an input. And I gave you an output. Right? But the inverse function takes that process and it goes backwards. Okay, it goes backwards. It says, well, you know, if you give me the output, I should be able to tell you where you came from, your input, right? And that's the way functions work. I should be able to go in one direction or the other, because okay? I'll always have one value. 